there you are. I've been waiting for you. So nice of you to return or join us for the first time on the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. This is our Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. It's bringing back the lost art of conversation, sort of old school style. As we mention all the time, Lil Carson, Lil Cavett, Mike Douglas, Murph Griffin, some of the original TV hosts and presenters. And then we flip it a little, add in a modern vibe, modern twist. And you've got the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. We've done something like 600 episodes live. Guests coming in from Broadway, Hollywood, television, film, stage, music, culinary arts, comedy, sports, inspiration, and everything in between. You guys know I work in television radio uh, professionally, and that's how this show sort of developed. Our lovely audience is watching around the world. They're commenting galore. Thanks for all the great comments, guys. We absolutely love it. We're going to check in with the comments. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you're having a good day. If you're not having a good day, stick with us. You know we're going to put a smile on your face. We always have our light, love, and levity, and our famous JMS levity, too. Now, our very special guest, Carolyn Hennessy, she already said, can I be a levity? Can I, I want to be a levity. I mean, she's got Emmys and everything else, but she really has worked her entire career to become a gym master show levity. And that's going to happen tonight live. So don't touch that dial. Matter of fact, before you touch the dial, <laughs> don't touch that dial. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV, where we house this entire entertainment lifestyle talk show series, Gym Masters TV. Subscribe to it. Click the notification bell so you never miss any of our incredible episodes with our fabulous guests. And also, while you're doing that, give us a thumbs up like as well and leave a comment on the YouTube channel. We would love that. Thanks, gang. You guys are the best. Thanks for all these comments piling up here. We'll check in with our lovely audience watching live around the world. And those of you who are watching this later, we thank you as well for all the support and love uh, for this series. It's a unique community that we've created here on the Gym Master Show Live. And it's a pleasure to have you here. Also a pleasure to have Carolyn here live and direct from beautiful Burbank. Yes, I was just in Burbank uh, maybe about a year and a half ago before COVID, of course, on a TV shoot. Great spot. We are very excited to welcome twice nominated actress in 2021 for Best Supporting Actress as Diane Miller in General Hospital and Outstanding Performance by an Actress in the Daytime Fiction Program as Gloria Winton in Studio City. Also, previous Emmy winner Carolyn Hennessy just celebrated her landmark 500th episode on ABC's General Hospital. From an Oscar-winning family to her own Emmy Gold, Carolyn Hennessy has created characters that fans love to hate, but they love her <laughs> on both the big and small screen. One of the more recognizable, of course, is Diane Miller on General Hospital, GH, on ABC. Now, of course, you know, the COVID pandemic has delayed the landmark moment, but guess what? She has completed that episode and uh, it's extraordinary. In addition, she was nominated back in 2020 with Daytime Emmy in the category of Supporting Actress in a Digital Drama for her role as uh, Studio City as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. And of course, got Outstanding Performance, which is exciting, and so much more. Also, prior to that, lots more. If you guys know her background, you've been following her, she's extraordinary. She plays the uh, yet the cold, calculating villainous of Gloria Winton, of course, the executive producer of the fictional show within a show, Hearts on Fire. Prior to that, Ms. Hennessy won the Emmy for Outstanding Supporting Guest Actress in a Digital Drama as Karen Blackwell in The Bay. Yes, uh, this is just the shortlist, folks. As the niece of Hollywood veteran Barbara Rush. Did you know that, folks? And her Academy Award-winning father, Dale Hennessy. Carolyn is no stranger to the industry of entertainment. Emmy-winning Carolyn's long list of credits, as I've mentioned, also include major roles in True Blood, Revenge, Cougar Town, and, of course, General Hospital. Disney Channel's Jesse, NCIS, Adam Ruins Everything, A Snow White Christmas, Dawson's Creek, she was on, Gilmore Girls, and so much more. And, of course, St. Agatha, the horror feature. And uh, she was also involved with Masterclass, the beautiful play by Terrence McNally, who we lost not that long ago. And uh, also in Swing of Things and so much more. In addition to all of that, she has a successful career as a writer, creating the popular Pandora tween book series. And, of course, she's penned the 
fabulous New York Times bestseller, The Secret Life of Damien Spinelli. She uh, lends her time as well to wonderful causes. She focuses on animal rescue and advocacy with her own online podcast, Animal Magnetism, which highlights global animal advocacy issues. And for fun and workout, she even flies trapeze. <laughs> That's just the short list, folks. Just, just a few of the many things. But you guys know that already, don't you? And if you didn't, well, I'm so glad to be able to tell you about some of that. We're going to have a great time. We were already laughing uh, sort of backstage. She was in our green room enjoying our champagne and, uh, of course, you know, the caviar. And uh, uh, I guess we had chicken fingers and probably pigs in a blanket for her as well. well. We'll check in. We always feed our guests gloriously in the green room. Uh, have you been enjoying our champagne, caviar, and pigs okay. in a blanket, Carolyn? <laughs> <laughs> I'm on my third glass. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Only the best for our oh, guests. Yes, 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 Only yes, the yes. best. Diet Coke and Nathan's Famous. That's that's yeah. the high five. Please. I don't know what Stop you feed everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> How are you there in uh, beautiful Burbank, I'm California? Wonderfully well. Yes, and it is beautiful. I mean, uh, you and I were talking before, and it's it's gloomy outside today. Yeah. Yes. Um, but I love that. I yeah. love that. Uh, because you know, we are, we're sun all the time. So anytime we can get a little overcast, maybe some sprinkles, maybe some, you know, a good old downpour. We, we love it. We yes. just love it out here. So how have you been you know. doing during all this craziness? I mean, you've been keeping busy, of course, and, and you're, you're, you always have a lot of different, you know, irons in the fire, in the fire. And, and you love what you do, but you know, we've been in a strange time and uh, there's been a lot of teachable moments, a lot of lessons learned. What are some things that you've been doing to keep, uh, as I say, creative, connected, collaborative and sane during and all sane, of this? And sane. And, well, and all that rolled into one can, for me, equals a life lived without fear. Yes. So, so I, 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 you know, if COVID comes near me, it's like, get off. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I back, back. I refuse to, I refuse to even entertain the notion of you. And so far uh, I've been, I've been very lucky, you know? So for me, uh, again, it all boils down to gratitude. Yes. Because general hospital was down for about two, maybe I think three months, three months. And that was it. And we all sort of found things to do with ourselves for three months, but then we were back up. Yes. And we did not, we have not come down again. The protocols are top notch. Um, if anyone ever tells you that the actors on General Hospital are walking around without masks, I send them my way because I will refute that. Yes. Uh, we are, we're masked up one side and down the other. We're tested, we're vaxxed. Um, and, and so we are working. And and it's wonderful. Hollywood is slowly starting to come back. Yeah. I, I've done some movies in, in the last year and a half, two years. I've done some movies, done a little bit of television, General Hospital, of course, and yes, 500 episodes, which is great. But what's really cool is that I just hit my 15th year. <laughs> is that incredible? Did that not go by in a New York minute or what? Oh, you did. It kind wow. of did. Yes, a lot happened. But But I went, wait a minute. It was just the other day that I was... You know, for this supposedly two-day role, I, yeah. was, I was bringing my own wardrobe, seeing yeah. what they seeing what they thought was cool for the for the you know for the lawyer to wear. And right. now, now Diane, of course, has her own line in 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 the wardrobe room. Yes, and, uh, yeah. What's, so so that's fun. Um, but I've been um, I've been writing. I've been doing a boatload of reading, a lot of exercise, and and the one thing I do you you hit on it was um, I fly trapeze. And, yes. I also, and I also hang trapeze. So there are two, two different, different animals. One is the, you know, you see it in Ringling Brothers. It's, you know, he flies through the air with the greatest of ease. Uh, notice I didn't say she, because yeah. she does not fly through the air with the greatest of ease. She just <laughs> flies and then falls. Um, <laughs> I fly. And, and then you see a lot of the static or single or hanging trapeze in Cirque du Soleil. So I've, I have one of those at the end of my driveway. So I've been I've been getting into shape uh, and and choreographing routines on the trapeze. So that's that's been if there's if there's an upside, if there's a silver lining to 
any of this. For me personally, yeah. it's, uh, it's that. So when are we going to see you in Cirque du Soleil? Coming soon? <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> they, um, they would look at they'd look at me and go, "Oh, so lovely for an older lady. Lovely." <laughs> we're gonna back. We're gonna go back over here with the twelve year olds that you with know, the twelve <laughs> smoke and drink coffee. Um, you know, so <laughs> that's all they do. That <laughs> <They're is. okay. laughs> But you, you also, I mean, you come from a Hollywood family. It's in your blood. It's in your yeah. DNA. It's in your veins. Take us back earlier when you were a kid and, and witnessing your father's extraordinary career. And of course your aunt, I mean, these are, these are veterans in the industry. Um, did they, and were there others that sort of provided this early on inspiration for you to want to perform, connect, entertain, relate to people in the phenomenal way that you've done uh, for so many years and continue to do, Carolyn? Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes. Uh, it, it's very, it's clear in my mind. Um, when I was four, my mother took both my younger brother and I to uh, 20th Century Fox to soundstage, I believe it was five, might have been six, one of the two. And on that soundstage was filming Fantastic Voyage. It later um, housed this, all the sets for Young Frankenstein, which my father also worked on. But at that time it was Fantastic Voyage. Um, and I walked onto this, into this big dark room, onto this soundstage. And I remember it being pitch black. And yet at the kind of somewhere at the like at the far end in the middle um there was this light and all these lights and this this small hub of activity and i had no idea what was going on knew nothing i was four but again it's still clear as a bell and i thought i i don't know what goes on there in that in that circle of light i just know that i'm going to do it Mm -hmm. whatever it is. And it could have been being a key grip. It could have been being a, what they call script, a script supervisor, could have been directing, could have been, I don't know, but, but it turned out to, that I had a, I had a, a facility for being in front of the camera. So everything from that point was geared toward getting on stage, getting in front of the camera, doing that thing that I just discovered almost innately. The first time I was, I was ever on stage, I went, Oh yeah. Oh, 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 that thing that you knew you wanted to do it for? Yeah, mm. you were you were right. You listened to your gut, and you and and you and you kind of you're going for it. Um, and as a result of that, I became a studio brat. My father, wherever my father was, um, Warner Brothers, uh, 20th Century Fox, MGM, Sony, uh, the um, um, NBC, wherever, wherever he was, I tried to find him and. Yeah. and and spend as much time as I possibly could being that studio brat. I mean, just, just you know, walking onto a soundstage and just in a deep inhale, because that's history and many years and probably a lot of mildew and asbestos. But yes. other than that, it you know, a lot of ghosts on those stage, and it's just just breathe that in and close your eyes and realize that that so much of what has shaped our society culturally was shot on all of these stages and, and, and then, and then, you know, disseminated to a mass audience and, and the lessons, the lessons that those classic films, classic television that they taught us are, were just what I, that was my, that was my, my food. Early on, so then you really soaked it all up. You you really paid homage to and respect to the monumental nature of everything that was around you, and you were really absorbing that, and that was sort of tickling your fancy a little, huh? Absolutely, absolutely. I just essentially knew what I was supposed to do from a very, very young age. And so, you know, elementary school, junior high school, high school, university, everyone who was kind of like didn't know what they wanted to do, I bypassed all of that. I was very directed and very focused. And fortunately, I had this wonderful father who uh, was on location a lot, but a lot of time he was here. And again, I would try and find him. And I watched all the, all the great lessons that I learned about this business, how you behave in this business, and then extrapolating that to how you behave in life, or at least 
try to as much as you humanly possibly can, because we all fail. We all make mistakes. But 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 the guidelines I got from my father um, were clear in how any crew. He was a production designer. So so he was he was behind the scenes. He was right. back of the camera. He designed he was responsible for the look of any project that that he was hired on. Mm. So Logan's Run and Young Frankenstein and yeah. Annie and Dirty Harry and the King Kong with Jessica Lange and classics and for which he won the Academy Award, Fantastic Voyage. And and, you know, people hear Logan's Run and their eyes kind of roll back or, or they hear Young Frankenstein and their eyes yes. roll back or even Fantastic Voyage. Um, it was very clear the way anyone who worked underneath my dad, the crew, just revered him. Yeah. Revered him. And that you do not see a lot of. Nope. Um, where it's truly honest because actors will say, oh my gosh, you know, he's the next best thing. He's a, he's a revelation. He's the next best thing since sliced bread. She's just, you know, a gift from God. And sometimes they mean it. <laughs> sometimes they don't. Right. But... When people, when my father, my father passed away when I was 19. Yeah. And that's when I was just starting to kind of make inroads into the business. And people would come up to me and say, you're Dale Hennessy's daughter. Oh, okay. What can we do for you? We can't, we can't cast you in anything, but we can paint your house. We can, uh, we can light it. We can give you lumber. What, what would you, what do you need? And it's like, thank you. No, thank you. But thank you. But so, so my father mm. taught me the most invaluable lessons of my place in this business and my place in life. And that mm. is, you know, the crew uh, works, works harder in a day than you will in a year. Oh, and and they're smarter, yes. they're better educated. They're better read. They're nicer. They're uh, they've seen it all coming and going. So you're, you know, you ain't, you yeah. ain't doing anything special. Right. Unless you treat them with dignity and respect. Exactly. And then because that is so rare, they'll do a double take and go, what? You know, our names. Oh, well, oh, what can we do for you? You know what I mean? It's like, it's like they can be your best friend, mm -hmm. but you don't treat them well so that they will become your best friend. You treat them well because because they're human beings and right. can work so much harder than I probably ever will. Um, Some of my best conversations happen yeah. in between shooting and when we're talking to, oh, yeah. you know, the crew, the camera people or whoever. And, uh, yeah. and, yeah. you know, and I, I love what you're saying because I've always said this and I've even said it on this show with some of the guests and the viewers. Uh, I was always trained coming up the ranks to appreciate and know at least something about what every single person is doing. Even the folks in the sales and promotion department yeah. know everything because they're every piece of it is a puzzle and it all is linked. So yes. because maybe you're here with the lights on you and you're on set and the makeup artist is coming and powdering you up, everybody else you know there's a reason why they're there they're they want to be there they're excited they have a, a purpose and when you honor that and you respect that and also know a little bit about what they're doing because there's been times where i've been thrown out there because the other person fell ill or couldn't didn't show up and just had to go and help however i could sure. um, i love the way that you've uh pick that up really early in your sure. life to understand the entire process and not just the one way thinking of of just carolyn oh, please, uh, yes. who's oh. just a team it takes a village yeah. yeah in fact i say now and i've said this for many many years that my my mantra um it used to be my mantra on set and then my mantra in life is my job is to make your job easier that's my job you've hired me for a role and 99 and nine like 999 times out of a thousand i've got that okay i've i've been around i've been doing it long enough i've i'm a, i can i know how to get to where i need to go i need to know where to go deep where to mine you know for this this these nuggets of gold that's great i've got that you've hired me because you you pretty much know that i've got that so now i can relax a little bit on set make it fun for me, it has to be fun for me because that's going to bleed through onto any screen, no matter if it's a horror movie, if I'm being an, uh, an absolute bitch, 
if I mean, <laughs> if as long as I'm having fun, that's gonna that's gonna read that's gonna read. And if I'm having fun on set, everyone else is gonna have fun too, or at least their fun quotient will be upped a little bit. And sometimes making their job easier just means getting out of the way. Yes, you know I mean? it's like points coming through. It's like oh, I'm gonna I'll fly over here. What do you need? Oh, how can I help? What can I do? Now there are so many union rules. It's like you can't pick that up. You can't touch. You can't move. That. Yes, you can't touch anything. Right. I'll, I'll just stay out of your way. But if I can, help, just let me know. You know, just let me know. And sometimes making their job easier is knowing their name and saying and saying good morning, so and so. And then again, their eyes go wide. It's like oh my god, she knows. It's like. You know, it's not even that I'm any great shape. I'm just an actor who now knows their name. It's like, yeah, because we all put our pants on one leg at a time. It's exactly like, right. It's yes, just, it's really, really that simple. And 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 when I when I teach when I lecture, yeah, I will say, young actors, pay attention. Yeah, you do the. You, you want to be the one that they bring back because you want to be so much fun to work with on, on a set. You want to be the one that they want to spend sometimes 16, 17, 18 hours, sometimes longer on a big, in a big dark room. With. And so the one thing you don't do is you don't talk about acting. <laughs> you don't talk about your process. You don't talk about, you know, the last job you had because that's boring. It's just boring. These are these from soup to nuts, from from, you know, the PAs who do the hardest work, yeah. Up, down, you know, to the director, to the camera. These are these are people who don't give a crap about your acting process. They want to know uh, what do you what, what are your hobbies? What are you reading? What's the best thing you've eaten lately? Do you know what I mean? It's they want to know that you're a well-rounded person that right. they can have a discussion with about other topics. So, you know, so I say be a sponge and soak up everything. Yes. Be able to not only regurgitate that back in a wonderful performance, but also as a human being on a soundstage. And so, you know, so that, that has stood me in good stead. Very important. I was on a commercial shoot in New York once. I was spokesman for uh, this um, chain of uh, dealerships and the, the uh, female counterpart that they brought in, it was the very first time that she was ever acting in a commercial or performing in a commercial and in a spokesperson role. And she would made him a, 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 a deadly error that really cost her what was going to be a string, a multitude of ongoing commercials that would last for a long time. Yeah. And that is when she was, when there was downtime in between her needing to be on set or outside, it was all outside. Um, she brought her modeling portfolio and was showing everybody her modeling portfolio oh well you know i'm here on this commercial shoot but i'm a model too here are my prints here are my headshots and the other talent were like close that now Shh, don't let don't let the executive producer see that don't let anybody see that oh well I, I, look what i do i do this and it, she was passing it around and everybody was like no and then she started to tap her foot about when are we going to break to eat? Oh yeah. Yeah. Loudly. And yeah. this was her first time and everybody tried to warn her because the, the executive producer who was an extraordinarily talented person can be finicky, maybe a little moody, but was a perfectionist and was going to do how you know whatever it took to get that shot, especially since we were outdoors and the sun was setting, everything had to match. So instead of going that extra mile a little bit, she was like, Come on, you know, on my modeling shoots, we would have eaten already or what have you. He's actually verbal about it. Yeah. yeah. And that ended up getting back. He overheard it because okay. she had a microphone on. Of course. Bye bye. 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 Bye, Anara, sister. I hope that modeling, first of all, of course, she's going to want to know when lunch is. She's a model and they're always hungry. That's number one. So if she was, it was like, free food, <laughs> free food? oh, when, 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 when? Yeah. She doesn't want celery sticks either. Everybody wants when lunch is. Everybody does. Yeah. You don't say it, you know? And, no. and, it's and, a modeling know. portfolio, too. I mean, on a commercial <laughs> shoot. I mean, no, no. And yeah, because that, first of all, Everyone on that set wants to know that everyone else on that set is focused on this project. On this, this project, day. yes. You are here. We bought you. We own you for the day. So, or the week, or the weeks. 
And when you're on this set, and when you leave it, we have no control. But when you're on this set, you need to be focused on what we're doing because we're paying you. Yes, right. So, so have yeah. we ever heard from her again? Yes, her name is Julia Roberts. No, <laughs> her again, probably not. That she disappeared. Yeah. That was it. Uh, you know, yeah. it was recasts effective ASAP. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was yeah. recast really quickly. Should. Oh, I have. Yeah, I've got some some horror stories about about actors that you you've seen them you admire them you respect their talent and then you and then you actually get to work with them most of the time they're all just fabulous they're wonderful and then you've got some horror stories it's like oh oh my gosh how many years have you been in this business yeah. really and mm -hmm. it's like i didn't need the lesson but thanks you know <laughs> um thanks again i just mm -hmm. No way, you know. Yeah, so I've got, I have a, I have a few horror stories. Well, what was great about you is when we said, you know, we could offer the champagne in the green room. You said, you know, you don't have to go through that trouble. I'll take the Hawaiian punch. I'll take You're the very Hawaiian. easy. I, <laughs> I could be had for a baked potato. I'm, I'm just a, and if it's twice baked, oh and if boy. It's twice baked, oh. <laughs> so for you, what would you say, Carolyn? Was I mean, obviously, you were born into the business. You respect the business. You. You, you know, you know about dues paying and coming up the farm system. I mean, you have this illustrious um, background, but you really wanted to carve out your path, do Carolyn's thing, not necessarily rest on the laurels of the family, even though the family you know, are great influences. What would you say was probably one of those key pivotal door opening opportunities for you? that really started to get that ball rolling forward. People noticed Carolyn's talent. They enjoy working with her and things started to flourish from there. Well, first of all, just backtracking a little bit. Um, yes, I did grow up in this business, but I've also got this, this aunt, Barbara Rush. And, and, and I got, I mean, you know, I, I've watched her, but very little advice, nothing. So basically, I learned what I learned from my father. And my father, again, passed when I was 19. So everything yeah. that I got really yes. was, I mean, I can, you know, I can honestly say it was it was by my own best efforts. Yeah. Um, nothing was ever handed to me. Right. Ever. Right. Ever. Um, probably when things really, because I, I think I started earning my living where I didn't have to do anything else in my early early mid 30s and that was some time ago but that was cobbling together you know a guest star here and uh, and a little arc over here and oh a day a day's job on a, on a on a soap opera over here and you know you do you you're cobbling it together but truly it was when mark measures who's the casting director for general hospital called me and said hennessy and i said mark and he said uh, he said i've got some work for you I said, mm -hmm. terrific. terrific. He goes, yeah, because he had seen a play that I'd done years before. And so, and he started following the, the actors that he really loves. He keeps tabs on them. And what are they doing? And I need to go see it. And he will go, he's one of those in his business that will actually get off his ass and go see somebody. Go, right. So he'd seen me and he says, yeah, I've got, uh, I've got, uh, are you available? I've just got a couple of days work for you. And I said, sure, what am I, do I with you, of course. Of course, I'm a journeyman actor. I, I'm, I will, I'm, I'm, I'm the, the younger, prettier Michael Caine. I will do anything. Um, he said, "Yeah, you're going to become on, become on a general hospital. You're going to be Sonny's lawyer." And I went, "Oh, great! Who's Sonny?" And he, oh, what, you don't know who Sonny Sonny Corinthos is, played by Maurice Bernard, yeah. the actor and the hottest character in daytime. I said, "No, I don't." So uh, I, I went on and did my thing and interacted with Maurice and interacted with Bradford Anderson, who plays Damien Spinelli and Steve Burton, who's, you know, my, my darling Steve Burton, who plays Jason Morgan. And they saw something in the interaction with my character, Diane, with all of these. And they went, Oh, we need to explore this a little further. So that, that two days of work turns into 15 years. Oh, I mean, we may even be coming up on, well, I don't know where we are in the, in the, in the episode count. Maybe it's like five, five thirty now. Mm -hmm. But that's that's huge. That's a long, long time. And the fans, who are the smartest people on the planet, they mm -hmm. they have taken Diane to their heart. They love Diane. So it's all yes, yes. Oh, looking down her nose 
at something. I love that shot. What what are you thinking there? Or Bottom. what is what is she thinking? <laughs> Diane is probably looking at Sonny saying, if I could just smack you upside the head, <laughs> you're about to say something or do something really stupid. So uh, that's probably what she's <laughs> what she's thinking. Um, but that role. And that, ex and, and uh, again, that exploration of Diane Miller and allowing, I, I, I know what I was doing there. I was sitting on a couch talking to, I think it was either Elizabeth or Carly. And just, and, and, and it was probably Carly, because if you see the look on my face, it's like, <laughs> I am so over you, Carly. <laughs> so over you, you are getting on my last nerve. Um, but it was, it was that, because from that, I people's people would people watched it the kind of a small little buzz even though it's even though it's daytime the buzz and I I had done so much prime time before that so now there's this and I and I had also um I was also writing I'd started my my book series the Pandora series so there was all this kind of stuff that was going that I was doing so that enables you to walk into any audition situation and not be desperate because they can smell desperate a mile away and no one wants to work with desperate right Please. they they want to know it, and and when you're not desperate that's like an aphrodisiac to them to the you people. can't even be desperate to work on desperate housewives you can't <laughs> not at all and they kind of go oh, really you don't need us you don't need this job well let's hire her because yeah. she, there's something going on with 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 that yeah so, so there was this whole sort of mental state this mindset that i was in and and it's continued from there moving forward but it was during general hospital shortly thereafter that i that i got jesse and cougar town and and revenge and and all of these other things in fact and 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 true blood in fact there was uh there was one year where i actually couldn't be at general hospital because i was doing everything else because you were doing all the rest doing all that other stuff like and, you said and, jesse yeah. Yes, Jesse. How did you like playing the character and Jesse? Uh, Mrs. Disney. Chesterfield, Mrs. Chesterfield is one of the all-time great characters that I will ever play because uh, the cast, the crew, again, Pam Ells, who created the show, has is is to this day one of my very dearest friends. And what she would what she would write for me, what the writers would write for me, was like comedy gold. But it was yeah. also a wonderful lesson in. You do not, you will be put in funny costumes and and they will get wackier as the years go on. You will <laughs> you will have this dog that you have this unnatural attachment to. You yes. cannot stand these kids. You possibly murdered three husbands. I mean, who knows? <laughs> um, and 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 it's uh, and you're in love with the upstairs butler. <laughs> you are in love with the, with the upstairs with, with Bertrand. So, but if you, so it's all crazy and wacky and it's very broad, but if you comment on any of it, everything is sunk. You have to go balls to the wall. Yeah. Absolutely commit to what you are doing. Believe it, believe it, believe it. And so, yeah. and, and, and it was, and it was wonderful. And that's what made, and they all did all four of those kids, everybody on that show, um, committed and it was it was it was reality it was it was these were life and death high stakes very very <laughs> funny shows and that's what made them work that's what made them work the fact that we um the fact that we we were all so committed to it so i but i and i wrote a chesterfield because she's one of those characters you hate to love her and you love to hate her <laughs> yeah. and, and and she's you know she's a monster who always gets her comeuppance at the end of every episode so you know that you know somehow somehow something's going to up in the matrix and some you know she's got to be learning some lesson somewhere so talk yeah. about uh incredible variety and range terminator 3 oh my gosh look at that face look at that look at that wrinkleless face yes <laughs> yes yeah that's a funny story okay here's the story of that i was the first human being killed in Terminator 3. Now, they fit me for the so 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 at the at what what's happening right now is that I am watching this very naked Kristana Loken, the Terminatrix, walk across Rodeo Drive and it's probably about 3:30 in the morning when we're filming this. But it's <laughs> the last day of filming. And she and and you know the Terminatrix walks up to me, um she takes my car, my wardrobe and my hairstyle. 
Mm. So it's the last day of like a 235 day shoot. <laughs> I mean, it's right the last day. Yeah. Naturally, Kristana Loken has has been in what is this hairstyle mm -hmm. for the last 235 days. So I walk in with this hairstyle, right? With my 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 short and sassy hair. And this. I walk in with this, right? Short, short. And hair and makeup takes one look at me and goes, What what what's happening? What where's your hair? And I went, What do you mean where's my hair? This is what I auditioned with. This is what they knew. This is on my headshot. This is what's what why? What's the problem? And they said, Well, this is Cristana Logan. Slicked back a bun, you know, like like coiled in the back and i went oh well fortunately this is not my department but how can i make your job easier so they they panicked they literally panicked so th there is about a thousand pounds of like dippity do or whatever it is on that head right that you're looking at right there and they somehow found this hair piece that they, I think they sprayed it with like spray color to kind of get it to match, match my, my, my normal color. And they tacked that onto my head with 5,000 bobby pins. And, and we somehow, they somehow made me look like her as opposed to making her look like me. They made me look like her, <laughs> but they were horrified when I walked in. And it's yeah, like, yeah. I'm sorry. But that, that shoot was so extraordinary because it was, I think at that time, the biggest budget for any film ever, like $250 million. I could be wrong, but it was huge, huge. And it was the last day. So everybody was getting rid of everything, which meant that there was like shrimp scampi at Crafty. And there was like, you know, steak. And, and I was like, <laughs> oh. Oh, look at this. Again, free food. Yeah. So so I I hear over the over the over the the walkie talkies, it's like, does anyone have eyes on Carol? And it's like, yeah, she's at crafty. Again, yeah, she's at crafty. It's like shoveling <laughs> pockets lined with plastic. And then that wasn't even like the first meal. It was just it was. <laughs> lobster, lobster. Oh, I this this is the day when I'm glad to be an actor. Yay. That's it. That's not always like that, but yeah. And I bet you didn't ask when the food was going to be served. Like I didn't the other, uh, <laughs> and, like, and crafty. It's like, pardon me, you're not going to need me for a, for uh, a little bit. Well, yeah. will you? I'm just going to run over we'll, here. We'll, we don't want it to spoil. <laughs> we <laughs> Dawson's <laughs> Creek too. Oh my gosh! Yes, and the love to hater, Mrs. Valentine, who ran. Who ran the yacht club? And I think right there, I am speaking to um, Katie Holmes. I think I'm speaking to to Joey. Um, and again, it's one of those characters that's. It was not over the top. It was not. It was subtle. It was vile. She was nasty. But again, at the end of every episode, Mrs. Um, uh, Mrs. Valentine got got hand got her ass handed to her uh, some 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 lesson some lesson so yeah, so that yeah. was that was a lot of fun and that's that's what that's where i learned to love um wilmington wilmington yes North Carolina. that's where they did the filming right oh, yes yeah it's the first time yeah. i ever felt like hot rain i went what's it's raining but it's hot right <laughs> <laughs> I can stand out here and not and I, oh, I watch this. Like, you know, I, I mentioned, and this sort of uh, spurred the memory of folks too, and they were very excited uh, that you worked with Adam Sandler in Click. Tell us about that too. Well, he's he's a champ. He's just a champ. One of the smartest men in show business. You cannot like his sense of humor, although if you're smart, you do. And you cannot like his films, although if you're smart, you do. Maybe not Jack and Jill. I mean, let's be honest. Yeah, but anyway, yeah. but other than that, <laughs> Click had such a such an interesting premise, and he's he's such a gentleman. I play the mother of the next door neighbor, who is not a fan of of his characters, you know, of his character, and I'm not the mother's not a fan of his. So I mean, I think there was like a you know. Joey or whatever is my son's name is get back here. What are you doing over there? 
but he and he didn't have to because he's that big but yeah. there again the bigger they are more often than not the nicer they are and 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 especially working his way up in comedy the way he did he took the time he came over introduced himself and was lovely just yeah. lovely so you know i'm a i'm a huge sandler fan in addition to the fact that he's one of the funniest men on the planet you know yeah so there's so there's that yeah he was he's lovely and when someone that's when that's when i learned that and i've had this happen when it's my show not my show but like when it's a show that i am an integral part of like general hospital you get you get you get atmosphere you get you know background people in kelly's or jake's or the metro court or wherever it is and these are individuals who want to who want to act most of them some of them just love the life of being of being atmosphere right most of them want to act and i have heard nightmare stories mm. about actors on soaps on prime time that say i don't want them to look at me i don't want i don't want i don't they can't speak to me they can't talk to me they can't this they can't i'm i'm not a, in other words i'm not approachable they're 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 messing with my process whatever it is yeah and, and i i being a journeyman actor still yeah. i could i think i will always consider myself to be a journeyman actor no matter how infamous yes I, I yeah. might become, <laughs> right because i know how hard it is how hard it is i'm all about hey how you doing are you are you, are you guys having fun yeah you guys having yeah. fun and almost 99 times out of 100 everyone's just like Thanks. That's that's really cool. And we can strike up a dialogue. Exactly. Then I, you know what, guys? I gotta go work. Gotta go work. You know. <laughs> but you know, we'll we'll see each other. We'll see each other in the hallway. It's like and 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 you just because it's this business will break you in two. It yes. will rummage around inside your soul, and it'll it'll twist you up, and then it'll put you back together again and say now have fun and you end up being bitter and jaded and awful so i know i've done extra work when i was much much younger it's not easy it can be no. fun if you make it fun but i know how hard it is and you know it's people who are not nice to breakfast waitresses are not nice people people who are not nice to atmosphere actors are not are not good human beings might be fine actors but they're not good human beings and and i and i just say that's never going to be me because i know what it's like and there but for the grace of god go i so so you know be cool make someone and some you know make 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 their life easier for just a second why not what's it cost you cost exactly you exactly you right garners you great karma points and then oftentimes too because uh, the crew and others, producers, because you were nice and went the extra mile when they're casting something else. They're like, you know, that Carolyn, she was easy yeah. to work with. She yeah. went the extra mile. She didn't flip the ship over. Yeah. We we want to work with her. Yeah. She would and be she, great. And good. And she can, she comes in, she knows her lines, she hits her mark. So sometimes, uh, yeah, they'll, sometimes I've just been given stuff. It's like, can you can you be here at this time? It's like yes, I can. <laughs> Would you like to go through my agent so that I don't have to negotiate for myself? And so you know, but yes, I yes I will be there. Yes, I will be there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because exactly actors still have the reputation, you know, very often of being actors. A little fickle you know, or uh, <laughs> fickle. Uh, <laughs> well, they, 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 I was going they, through the alphabet, yes. alphabet so, stuff. Let's, that, let's, but, let's uh, work backwards. Um, <laughs> self centered, um, arrogant, egotistical. It's uh, and and nobody's that special. Nobody's that special. Like you said, we it's all put fun. the uh, pant leg on, you know. We do. and They don't all do the trapeze, though. They don't. No, <laughs> no. A lot of them don't. Although I've said to everybody, I say, I say, if you have the opportunity um, to get on a trapeze, a flying trapeze, just just go climb up that ladder, take one swing, because worlds will open up for you. Yes. If you can do that, you have conquered something in yourself, especially the people that are afraid of heights, because I used to be afraid of heights somewhat. 
now I'm scampering up like a squirrel and I just, I'm dancing around up on the board and it's, you know, I mean, I'm not dumb. I hold on, but, you yes. know, but, um, it, but you, vistas will open up for you. Um, exactly. The, the, uh, the, the limitlessness will become even more limitless. If that makes it, you know what I mean? It's, it's like, you can, if I can do this, I can do anything. Exactly. So. And that's so true. I mean, that's not everybody seems to get that right. And I guess, you know, if the nice doesn't work out, you could always try revenge. Oh, yes, I could. <laughs> I could. There again, one of these, look at that hair. God, they teased it up to God. Um, <laughs> Penelope Ellis, wonderful character. Again, but this was... She was, she could, she, there was, there was humor in not what she said, but how it was said, how I yeah, said it. Yeah. But she was vile, mm. vile, vile. And what she put this girl, this, you know, um, Elena Satine, what she put her daughter through. Mm. I mean, my God, she should have been shot. <laughs> but, um, but again, th those roles, the bitch roles are always so much more fun to play because there's this great adage that, the snake gets the best lines and the best shoes. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, <laughs> and it's true. And they are so- And is that true? It, 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 no, it, it, absolutely. And they're yeah. so much more fun to play than the delightful wallflowers and, you know, the ingenues and, oh, Juliet, because you get to explore parts of yourself that if you explore them in public, in real life, you're arrested. You're going to be locked up. Yes. You're institutionalized. Uh, yeah. 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 You don't yeah. want to do that, but it's fun to go there and get paid for it. <laughs> 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 and then come back. I did. I did and an, then come back. And then, and then come back. I did this film called St. Agatha, um, where again, and it was the most evil. I mean, I, I'm the big bad in the movie. Yes, you did. There and, you are. And there is nothing funny about Mother Superior. There's nothing. And she's she's just, I mean, the facial. You're the extraordinary story. in it. Yeah, there, I mean, just, it, it just shows the level of talent. Uh, just really. So you're so believable as, in everything you do. Just, well, yeah, but, but Mother Superior was particularly awful. Yes. And I won't spoil it. Right. For for the for your for your listeners and viewers, but there's a particular moment where this one young novitiate, um, I I encourage her mm -hmm. to do a bit of self mutilation, mm -hmm. right? Because she's her tongue has been wagging, she's been right. telling tales out of school. So I encourage her to fill in the blank. Wagging, not not right? necessarily bite her nails. No, <laughs> no, I encourage her to do that mm -hmm. and. There's, and I was telling this to my then therapist who may have fired me for this reason. I don't know. <laughs> and I said, I said, yeah, so, so there was, she, she has to do this, but I come rushing back in and all of the, the, the other little girls are, are kind of gathered around her and she hasn't finished the job. So I, said to, I said to the director, I said, well, why doesn't Mother Superior just finish it for her? <laughs> he, went, he went, oh, and this is a guy, this is a man named Darren Bowsman who directed Saw 2, 3, and 4. This man knows gore, he knows blood, he knows inventiveness, and he looked at me like, oh, do you, oh, you want to do that? I went, of course, that's what Mother Superior would do. So I I, I, I end up finishing it, and my therapist looked at me and said, how do you come back from that? I said, because it's acting. It's make-believe. I hope to heaven I would never do that in real life. <laughs> but it's fun to go there. To go there, yes. And come back and realize right. that, it's, especially when you're watching. It challenges you, doesn't it? It challenges sure. you. What, now, ha, that role or any of the roles that you've uh, had the pleasure of being involved in, have you ever gotten so attached to a role? It's so intense it's so consuming that even when you're off set and the lights are off and you're not even near the building your home your wherever it's still so intense that it it's tough to detach from that role that person have you had yes. that yes yes and that was a stage play that was masterclass 
That was Maria Callas. Which um, I know was one of your favorite things you've ever done in your career of all the beautiful things, right? Terrence was, McNally. Was, and yes. That yes. was brilliant. You and that, were brilliant. Was, that was DNA changing. That, and, but, but, but it was one of those things where I didn't want to detach. I didn't <sighs> want to detach from this brilliant, mm. manic, tempestuous, genius performer. And what Terrence McNally wrote for her to say based on Maria Callas's master classes at Juilliard. He took he took some of he took a lot of those transcripts because she was teaching when when all she could do was teach at that point. She, and she was and she was vicious. She was brutal. She was at the tail end of her career. She wasn't she wasn't too many years away from actually passing away. Um, she could no longer sing. And and at one point, Callas has to sing or has to has to attempt to sing. Um, in in masterclass, and it comes out as this cracked, broken wreckage, and she's just shattered. She's she's shattered through a lot of it. But what he's written for her to say about performing, and art, the art of performing, is is as true today and for me, and is as as, as it was for her. Um, and she's 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 just this this bona fide Amazon who's broken. Mm -hmm. And it's, ah, it's, it's, and so I, so I just delved, I did, I did the deepest possible dive down into the rabbit hole <laughs> and I, I read everything about her. I watched her. And if, if anyone lis listening or watching knows her, then, you know, yes, those yeah. who don't, please, please just Google, Google, um, Vici Darte, uh, from Tosca on, on yeah. YouTube, just Google it. Google what was it like? Being exposed to somebody of the likes of a uh, Terrence McNally, extraordinary, huh? Well, that yeah, truly wonderful, truly wonderful. Because he, he again, she, as she tapped into something that's beyond the veil, beyond right. Who did he? He yeah. might have taken the transcripts, but it's still be what her words, what those transcripts are then being altered and being filtered through him and his ideas of art and what it means to be the consummate artist that doesn't matter who you are or what you're doing or where you're doing it when you stand on a stage or you stand in like in front of a camera and the words are coming out of your mouth for that moment you must the audience has to be convinced that what you are saying is the most important thing that is being said in the universe at that moment they have to listen to you. They must listen to you. That is your job as an artist, as a performer. And it's and I so being able to say those words. And we we did have. In fact, I'm looking at my I'm looking at the poster in my in my office right now. It's just it's like, mm, yeah, yeah, that was that was extraordinary. We did have um, toward the end of the run. Um, Terrence McNally was going to come out and see it because Terrence McNally was best friend best friends with Gary Marshall, the wonderful television, you know, the director, producer, Happy Days and Pretty Woman and all these things. Best friends. And so that's the reason that we got to do it for the mm. inaugural production of the inaugural season of the opening of the Gary Marshall Theater. It became the Falcon Theater. And then upon Gary's passing, it became the Gary Marshall Theater. So Terrence McNally was going to come out and see it. And he was too ill to do that. So he sent a representative and none of, none of the cast knew this, but our, our artistic director knew this. Um, and towards the end of the run, uh, Terrence wrote him and said, my emissary has told me that of all, of all the productions and my emissary has seen all of them. This was the finest one that was ever done. And that's, you know, and listen, Zoe, Zoe Caldwell won the Tony for it on Broadway. No, no slouch. But that this was this was the one that 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 really got to the heart of it. Mm. Heart of it. Yeah. And so that that for me will be the greatest, pretty much the greatest review, because Terrence McNally was so moved to, to then write our artistic director, who happened to be the director, Dimitri Choskas, and say, this is what I've heard. Yeah. And I trust this man. So it's like, oh, OK, thanks, Maria. Yes, absolutely. 
every night before I went on stage, I said, let's go, Maria. Yeah. I need, you know, I'm calling, I'm, I'm calling you down and we will mm -hmm. make lightning strike. We're going to draw a little chalk circle and then we'll make, go make lightning strike. Cause for those, for these two hours, yeah, this, this is the most important thing that anyone will hear in the universe. Right. So just to show the diversity going from that to legally blonde too. Well, actually legally blonde too was many, many years ago, <laughs> many years ago. Yeah. And uh, I was, I was. Um, are you are you tearing up for, uh, as we go back in time? Or? Oh, yes. like, oh, I just, I'll just remember how fresh faced and young I was back then. Um, uh, no, that, no, that was Terminator. That was Terminator. Terminator. Yes, I know, that was Terminator. Oh, I, um, I was the senator with a bad, you know. Uh, Jennifer Coolidge goes to mm -hmm. work on me. Uh, yeah. She's she's doing hair for everyone in the Senate. And I end up with the worst possible haircut on the planet. But I think I'm the senator from Florida or Ohio. Anyway, she gets it confused, and then I and then I kind of look at her and get it confused. But yeah, I was I was, you know, that was that was lovely. That was a, that was fun. That was Good. the coldest winter I think I've ever spent um, because it was a couple of weeks in Springfield, Illinois, mm. the land of Lincoln. Lincoln land lived Lincoln. there, and yeah. I, in fact, I went to Lincoln's home. Uh, did it did a tour. There are no trees in Springfield, just just for anyone's edification. And I thought, well, Abraham, weren't you cold? Why did you stay here? <laughs> why didn't you? Why didn't everyone move south? <laughs> brutally, brutally cold. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I was and and cold and windy and rainy. Yeah. <laughs> These the um. The people in the flyover states are the hardiest, mm. the, most, the toughest, the yes. great constitutions of anyone. Because I have my my great 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 relatives were in Wisconsin, Norwegians. And again, I would I would say to them when we would go back to visit, um, really, really, it's it's summer here now. It's lovely. Yeah. But come January, you're going to be in five feet of snow. Yes. Why are you here? Why? Explain it because I don't understand. <laughs> you could have just—it's like you left Norway. Yeah. Get out of the cold. To Didn't go to not sixty Wisconsin. Yeah. To go to Wisconsin, right? But the cheese curds are good, huh? Cheese curds <laughs> and the beer. I was just in, Milwaukee. in Minnesota. <laughs> I was just in Minnesota performing a wedding for for one of my, two of my very very dearest friends. And and they had cheese curds and I went what what well I tried <laughs> cheese curds and I and, and I was sold you can yeah. you could, it's like yeah no you all get your own plate of cheese curds yeah cheese that's curds. what when I was there I was on a TV shoot and uh, they said when you go you need we were in uh, just west of Milwaukee and they said that you have to have the cheese curds you have to have the there's a certain custard that you had to have. Uh, the Milwaukee beer. That just there was a, several things that must be tried while visiting. Uh, oh, the countryside is beautiful. The countryside. Listen, Hayward, Wisconsin. That's when that's where they had you know this 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 resort, Simonson's Portage Trail Resort on Lake Windigo. Um, and when I say resort, I'm not talking about the Grand Wyoming. I am talking about nine little cabins on a lake, and you could and there was a there were canoes and and fishing motorboats, and you could you, you could and you know fish for your supper and, and yeah. yeah that's it right. that's it um, you just kind of went there to fish and to get away from it all, but it was it was wonderful yeah the gorgeous gorgeous. Do you get a chance to travel, you know, obviously before this COVID thing and everything, but have you been able to travel a lot through your work or just a, to a get lot, away from yes. yeah. yeah, and I actually traveled through COVID. I did a, I did a film in Atlanta. Um, again, I went to, you know, again, all the protocols, everything's in place, but went to um, Minneapolis, um, you know, kept my mask on on the plane, except when I was eating. So I took a big bag of peanuts and it was like, I'm eating. <laughs> I'm eating. Still eating. <laughs> I'm eating. As they're walking down the aisle. I, like, yeah. I have three <laughs> peanuts left. I just yeah. have three peanuts left. Right, exactly. I just it's want like, to finish these three. Big bag of like, like, oh, I don't know where I'm getting them from. I just, <laughs> I'm just, I mean, um, so yeah, I did, some, I did some traveling. I was, I, I've 
I've gone to London several times, traveling um, a lot of time in Atlanta. Um, uh, where else? In, I was filmed in New York and yeah. Arizona, and I mean, just you know, various places. Ta South Africa, wonderful. Yes, um, we uh, have viewers from there. Yeah, Transylvania, and Romania. Yeah, uh, yeah, great. So you've you know. even been to Cougar Town. I've even been to Cougar Town. <laughs> I love these segues. <laughs> oh, yes, that was that 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 was so much fun. Barb Coleman was uh, again one of the greatest characters ever because she didn't have boatloads to say in most of the episodes, but what they wrote for her were these one-liners of comedy gold, and I would just run in. S drop drop the bomb and then scurry away and watch yeah. the destruction and uh, and that was just that was just heaven that was just heaven. <laughs> and what was it like working you know with the uh, the other actors and actresses and crew and everything there because that was a it's a great role as well oh god barb was great but you know again and court courtney cox was she she was a dedicated professional yes um because uh, she was also the executive producer of the show. Right. So, I mean, I did not, um, I didn't get terribly chummy with her because she was not only worrying about when she was going to pick her kid up from, from like elementary school, uh, but she had to, she was, she was, she was executive producing with, with um, Bill Lawrence. Um, so I, I just, I, you know, I, I just made her, I tried to make her life easier by getting out of her way. Do you know what I mean? But there's it was, a there's a theme here with that making yeah. others' lives easier. There's a theme well, you, there. You know, yeah. you know, you try to listen. It's not brain surgery, but it's but it's also not easy. It, right. And and one bad apple can can really spoil it and can make you. it make it a nightmare. Yes. And I've, I've seen it happen. You've seen so it. Happen. I, yeah. So but so she was lovely. I mean, she's like flawlessly gorgeous and funny. Um, the uh, the f the fellows who were like who played her ex husband Dan Bird who played her son. Busy Phillips, lovely. They're all just wonderful. Um, and I and I just, you know, that's one of those things where how much fun, how how badly can I crack the crew up today? Yes. Because what they wrote for Barb, oh my goodness. Mm. In fact, someone years ago had gotten together all of the Barb clips, the best of Barb. And it was about 10, 15 minutes long. And it was so good and so well produced that I contacted this person and I said, I'm Barb. Can I use your video as my comedy reel? Wow. And they went, oh, God, <laughs> yes. And I went, thank you. Push because, right. You know, Barb A to Z and you can't get better. So, yeah, I used, I used that as my comedy reel for years. <laughs> for years. That is fantastic. Yeah, it was so gorgeous. A Snow White Christmas. Oh, again. Another great one. Again. Um, gosh, yeah. This this girl who played Snow White, just lovely. And but again, you know, the delightful ingenue. Yes. And, and here I am playing the the updated version of the Evil Queen. <laughs> and that was that was such a fun, fun performance. Um, so much fun. Yeah, yeah, terrific. And I and I actually walked away with a lot of wardrobe. <laughs> well, you know, there, there are there are plus sides to it, there, all right? There are, there's, there's always a plus, but yes, the my, the version of the evil queen. You know, when we first meet her, um, she, Blanca Snow um, has dropped an, an a special ornament, like that she she this connection that she had with her father. So she, it's a very special ornament because, you know, it was for Hallmark and Light. They're all very, um, they're very yeah. cozy and wonderful. And and, um, so she's got this special relationship with her father who's passed on. My husband, I'm, I'm her stepmother. And she's dropped this ornament on the carpet, but she's misplaced her glasses. And I just come walking in and I just crush it with my shoe. It's like, oh, oh, did I step on you? Oh, I'm so sorry. I see that you take great pleasure in some of these roles. Oh, of course. <laughs> of course. 
no therapy is needed. Just get one of these no, rolls. You can work it all them. out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think my therapist was frightened of me. Yeah. <laughs> Do you lean or is there a preference? I mean, because you're so multi-talented in all these different areas yeah. as film, stage, television. Uh, Dra dramatic or comedic or do you love when it's uh I, you know dramedy when it's the I combination the, 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 com the combination of the two is 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 wonderful um i love hearing people laugh i love making people laugh that is bread and butter to me that's oxygen um so comedy it will always probably be be first and foremost now if you can do like a mrs valentine or a penelope ellis or a mrs chesterfield or sometimes diane miller um if you can if the stakes can be very high and you know and yet you can still be funny yeah that's the best of all possible worlds that's really the best of all possible worlds you mentioned also uh, you're a prolific writer and you have this wonderful series of books, children's themed books. Tell us about this. How did the, the Pandora series actually, what was the inspiration for that? How did it begin? I was, I was in a writing workshop um, and I was, we would meet on Saturdays at, a, at this woman's private home. And I was, I mean, people were working on um, novels and plays and, you know, whatever. I was, stuff, yeah. I was a dilettante. I was just kind of there for the camaraderie and it was fun. And I started, we had a discussion of Gregory Maguire's Wicked. We had like a, just, just a discussion of that. And I started writing a series of short stories based on misunderstood women in fiction, very much like Elphaba. And, you know, she's, she wasn't bad. She wasn't wicked. She was misunderstood. She misunderstood. Absolutely. So, so one of these stories was a was a thirteen year old Pandora, based on the daughter of a boyfriend at the time. It's just awful. Sorry, she was. She was. She, so everything that is was. So I so I was writing these short stories, and I wrote one about Pandora, and kind of based it on this girl, how she was sullen and morose, and she was, she was, you know, angsty teenager. But when you're kind of in a relationship with her father, you don't want to you don't want to have to deal with that. Whatever. I was I was not I was not patient. So I channeled it all into writing this short story. And I read this short story, which ends up being chapter four in book one. It's, that's pretty much basically the short story. Um, Sherry and, Larson says, I read an excerpt from the first book. Love the humor. Show and tell with daddy's liver. Yes, exactly. that's, <laughs> true. that's true. So. Of a, a, a visiting author from Ireland heard me read this short story and said, "No, no, 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 no. That doesn't need to be a short story. That could, that that can be a that can be a novel for young adults." And he and I met once for coffee while he was here visiting. And I said, "Well, what about three books?" Not not knowing what I was getting myself into at all. And I he goes, yeah, "Absolutely, three books." Um, but I'd like to, I want to see the, he, this visiting author said, I want to see the outline for the first book, you know, in a week. And I went, okay. So I started writing the outline and then I just went, uh, I just have to write the book. I'm just going to write the book. And there are, the premise is that that 13 year old Pandora, whose father is Prometheus, I, I minored in Greek and Roman mythology at university. So I knew, a, I had, I was, I knew a lot about it. So that's kind of like the one deviation from the classical Greek myth that Prometheus is not Pandora's brother-in-law in this he's her father. And as far as I know, nobody is alive who was alive back then to tell me that I was wrong. So, <laughs> so, so, so she's, she's a demigod. She's part immortal. She's part human. And she, but she's 13. She lives in ancient Greece. There are gods and goddesses and monsters and heroes and everything's, you know, temples and everything's flying around and she's she's right in the thick of it. But there's a universal overlay to it. So, you know, there's the fast falafel shop and the, you know, her, her mother goes to get her hair done at, you know, Calypso's Clay Pot Beauty Emporium. I mean, you know, just I mean, she goes to the Athena Maiden Middle School and she's got and she's she and her two best friends are not terribly popular, but they've they've all had every every girl at the, at the school has had this big project due for three months 
But Pandora's curiosity has led her astray. It's the night before the project is due. She's got bubkis. She's got nothing. And she inadvertently finds the box holding the box that holds all the evil in the world. The source of the seven great evils, kind of a takeoff on the Judeo-Christian evils. And she knows she's not supposed to even think about it, but wouldn't it be great to take to school for show and tell because she's taken her dad's liver that, you know, got pecked out by the, anyway, if you read the, the myth of Prometheus, uh, right. giving fire to mankind, she's taken the liver, she, she, you know, everyone's seen that. She's taken the bit of the eternal flame that her father stole from Zeus and gave to man. Every, boring. So wouldn't it be great to take a box holding all the evils in the world? And she does. And, she and does. naturally all hell breaks mm -hmm. And so she's summoned up to Olympus and Zeus says, okay, really? Really? You knew you weren't supposed to think about it and you took it to school. And and you let these other girls get their hands on it just, just to be popular? I mean, what? So here's your choice. Eternal torture and torment in the flame pits of Tartarus and Hades, or you have to go and get everything got, got, got out of the box, back in the box. You alone and your family can do it, that you're, nobody else can, in your family can help you. What's your decision? And you've got six months. And she says, okay, I'll do it. I, I'm going to get, I'm going to die, but mm -hmm. I will do it. So, and her two best friends um, come with her because as they say, we're, we're more family than our biological family. These, these three girls. And, and if you don't save the world, there won't be anything left to come home to anyway. So, mm -hmm. so they set off. And she's given this funky map. She's got to learn how to read it. She takes her shepherd dog with her because he won't stay at home without her. And so these, and then in book two, they meet the gladiator school dropout named Homer, who just wants to be a poet like his ancestor. And so these four kids go off and they're, um, and it, it takes them seven books. And I won't, I won't let you know, but obviously they find six of them. Yeah. So, so there's, <laughs> there's the kids, one, one book per evil. So. How did you have time to even write them with all the work that you do? I so just, really. I found the time. I made the, time. Found I the also, time. I also think it's possibly um, from my brain, the best, the, the, the greatest, the best thing that I've done. It's the best footprint up and up to now that I, that I've ever, that I've left. So. Yeah. It's, it's, it's great. And there, and you can read it at, you know, at the age of seven. I've had as young as six, but it's basically like eight to thirteen, boys and girls. But yeah. I've had I've had all all ages. All people. ages. Oh, they just yeah, they 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 enjoy it. That's not the only one, too. The no. Secret Life of Damien right. Spinelli. Now, yeah. this is unique what you've done here. I don't want to give it all away, but tell us about this. This is very cool. Well, I was called in, I think it was about 2010. I was called into the, the fifth floor. Jill Farron Phelps was producing General Hospital. And she said, well, myself and Bob Guza, at that time, the hand writer, they said, we know you can write, right? Uh, because you <laughs> sold these books. You've got three of these Pandora books out on the shelves now. And you've been writing more. So this is what we think you can write something for us. Um, we want a fictionalized account, a, a novel using all the characters in Port Charles, the, the the main characters, from one particular character's point of view, Damien Spinelli. And I went, okay. So I came up with the idea of like 16, 17 short stories, because for those who of your viewers and listeners who know General Hospital, Damien Spinelli, he's this, he's this com computer hacker, this nerd extraordinaire. His, right. his IQ is off the chart, but in his head, he thinks he's, Sam Spade. He's right, right out of Dashiell Hammett. So he taught, you know, he's the jackal. So, so he, one night, Diane Miller gets a note slipped under her door saying, please meet the jackal before he has to go to bed. His bedtime is very early. Please have, please meet him. He needs to speak with you. And so I, my Diane does, and they spend the night at the Night Owl Cafe. And he tells her all of these stories because he's about to go off on another mission, the Jackal, the next day, and he might not come back. He might not come back. So he wants her to know all these stories about all of her clients, most of whom are, some aren't, but all of these main these main characters, and 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 because they've been entrusted, he was there 
So he needs to tell her all of these things. So they spend the night and I'm just, my character, Diane, is just sitting listening going, stop it. You did not do this. You, he, They did not do that. And he goes, I swear to God. So he goes from being the jackal while he's telling the stories down to, you know, back to, back to Nebishi, Damien Spinelli, when I, when Diane calls him on stuff across the table, it's, it's a, it's a great, great telling. And anyone who knows, you know, um, Jasper Jacks, who knows um, about Luke's marriage to Tracy, not just to Laura, but to Tracy and what that entails and the dynamics there. Anyone who knows how Alexis's mother was killed, anyone, I mean, anyone, right? All of this would 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 love this because I actually just, I had to do a book signing yeah. about a month ago and I was sitting there, I, I started rereading it again. I went, oh gosh, that was, that was <laughs> funny. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Right. Okay. okay. So I, I was, uh, I was just so pleased, and it landed thanks to the fans, these genius fans. It landed at number ten on the New York Times bestseller list when it did. Spectacular. Did. So, I mean, Congratulations yeah. on that. Do you oh. see more similar works coming? Um, Has this sort I'd of tickled your fancy? To, I'd love to do another pass with some of the new characters or, or like, you know, revisit, revisit some of these older characters, like in the last 11 years, what has happened to them in the last 11 years. So I'd love to, I'd love to, I think that would be fun. Yeah. You know, uh, I mentioned as well, you know, you were talking about wonderful people and nice people in the industry that, you know, do exist. And there's one that we lost who, um, has a, has always had this similar tending to an appreciation for and love for animals yeah. as you do, and you're a wonderful you know animal welfare activist. And of course, we're talking about the incomparable Betty White. Betty White, great. Tell Betty us, White. tell us she, about like, yeah. Uh, she 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 like um like like myself. We weren't a uh, activists. We were advocates. Yes, and, and the right. Difference, the difference is vast. Yes. Uh, activists do not, and again, I'm speaking very generally here, very broad strokes, but activists do not necessarily understand the necessity at this point for modern zoos and aquariums. Betty understood that. She was one yes. of the for, the for the Los Angeles Zoo. She was the great ambassador for the, for the LA Zoo. And I am now an ambassador for the LA Zoo. But again, you know, Fabulous. Betty was the crown jewel. We, we're just all like little 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 diamonds in the tiara she was she was it and um i no one i don't know how anyone's gonna gonna um, take her place, place no her. Well. but advocates like betty like myself understand the necessity that 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 um where we are right now in human animal interest yes. human animal history um modern zoos and aquariums are the last arcs of preservation mm -hmm. there's there are no more wild spaces the, we can't uh, destroy the zoos and walk hand in hand down Main Street with the elephants. We can't do that. Um, and that returning something, you know, burning down the zoos and returning things to the wild, you might as well hang a sign on them that says poach me. Um, and and many of them do not know how to survive in the wild. Right. And, and, and we must allow them to be the incredible ambassadors because little Billy and Timmy and Susie from... Milwaukee. Maybe they've never seen an orca. Maybe they will never get into, you know, in, into the deepest, darkest Congo. Maybe they will never get onto the belt, onto the savanna. They will never see these animals in the wild. But we do not care about what we don't know about. So I, listen, I, when, I, when I reincarnate, I want to come back as an orca at SeaWorld because that's the, that's the level of care and love that these, that these animals get. Do Blackfish was a smear campaign. That's we can talk about that another time. Just understand that. Um, yeah. Or I want to come back. I want to come back as Billy the Bull Elephant at the Los Angeles Zoo, who was at the age of four was taken out of a Thai jungle because his and he'd seen his mother blow blown up by a landmine. So he was brought to the United States um, as opposed to being put into a lumber camp or a you know a logging camp. So he's and he's the care that he receives is extraordinary. So advocates understand that. They understand that the best care 
that many species can get because we lose 150 species a day from the planet. Which is sometimes unbelievable. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes it's a metaterrestrial. It's a big animal and we'll never, like the West African black rhinoceros, West African white rhinoceros, we'll never see them again. Except there are, um, there are cryogenically frozen sperm and eggs. So, and I know where they are because I've seen them in their cryotubes. So we have the specimens. We can repopulate, you know, if there, if we can ever find a scrap of land that's, you know, that's, that's wild that, that they could inhabit. So, so the hope is there. The hope is there for many, many species. And again, you know, modern, not, I'm not talking about the roadside attractions. We need to shut those down as soon as possible. Right. Positive reinforcement training in modern zoos and aquariums. That's the ticket because when the big, the meta terrestrials, the elephants, the rhinos, the giraffes, when the metamarines, the orcas, the gray whales, the blue whales, when they go, we are not far behind. It's just that simple. So saving them is saving us. You're even saying that because of the ice melt happening up north, the polar bears are running out of places to even live. I don't actually know. I'm I'm not as well versed on that. I, I there are two schools of thought. I know that that is one of them, but I also know that that is. I also know that there's another school of thought, and which says that that is not true. Um, by people who know, by non-activists, but by um, behaviorologists, uh, behaviorists, um, zoological um, staff, zoological researchers. Um, that who have gone up and who have scouted and who have seen. So, so there are two schools of thought. I cannot speak to it as much as I would like to. So, but if it, if it is true, then shame on us. Listen, yeah. you know, the, 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 yeah. the staff at SeaWorld, they, they have their, they have the collection, which they, yeah. you know, Right. But behind the scenes where very few people ever get to go, where I've been many, many times, that's where they do the three R's. Rescue, rehabilitate, release. That's right. They, they, they want they want it. They'll bring them in. They will rehabilitate them, and then they'll send them back out. But yeah. because 95% of what lives in the ocean habitates a two to five mile strip around the coast of every continent. The deep water, 5%. Deep water. When you get out like seven, then you're getting into deeper water. Mm -hmm. And we have turned that two to five mile strip into a sewer. You, if you think about it and you think it might be in there, you're probably right. Yes. Oil spills. It's the just, amount of plastic that's floating in the ocean. That's, yeah. it's, it's, please. Please. Yeah. And now they're finding it in the animals, in the, in the, in they're the, ingesting it, even in the, medicines. In the Mariana's and, Trench. Yeah. That's deep water. That's as, that's the lowest point on the planet. That's and the lowest like, point. What? What? But, but when I talk about SeaWorld, it's like because of, of, of water melting and the water getting warmer in this sewer, the sea lions off the coast, off off the coast, the West Coast. It's what they call the stranding chain. The moms who have born their pups, they have to go deeper and deeper out into the ocean, further and further out in order to feed themselves, in order to be able to produce milk for their pups. And they strand their pups. Sometimes they can't get back. So these pups, SeaWorld will go out and they will take them in. They will nurse them to full health, full run. And then, and I've been on the boats when they release them and it's the damnedest thing you've ever seen. It's so glorious. It's, it's so incredible. glorious. So yeah, but that work wouldn't be done if activists had their way. So, I mean, right. and so, so they would, we would lose more species faster. And yeah. we, just, we cannot afford to do that. Right. So, so to anyone listening, um, contact your local zoo, take a visit. If you see something that you think is not right, talk to somebody. Don't just take my word for it. But if it's a great zoo, San Diego, um, Columbus, uh, um, uh, Los Angeles Zoo, the Monterey, the Georgia, the Georgia Aquarium. Um, but talk to people. Talk to the staff there. And if you still have questions, talk to them again and get your get get your answers and make sure that you are comfortable now 
speaking for for something that is doing good for the planet. Mm-hmm. Good for the animals. These voice these these creatures that cannot speak for themselves. So exactly right. Beautifully said. Absolutely beautifully said. Um, Kathleen Walker in New York City had a question, and she wanted to know how much or is the character you play on General Hospital you, and how much of you is the character? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, absolutely. Um, if, if if you couldn't tell, um, because it's only supposed to be two days. When they kept bringing me back, and I started realizing um, that I was going to be around for a while. Bob Guza and Jill and I and some of the other writers, um, just in passing, we would talk about Diane. So I was um, partially instrumental in crafting Diane. So of course, it's going to come out, you know, as a lot, a lot like me. She has a much, well, she did, I think she did have a better fashion sense. Now I think I'm on par. And (laughs) <laughs> I, Carolyn got her love of shoes from Diane Miller. From Diane. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you got your question answered there in New York City, Kathleen Walker. The re- she said because you play her well. Well, thank you. I I sh- I, 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 I know her. <laughs> exactly exactly linda odell in florida says carolyn you're a very photogenic very pretty woman thank you god bless god bless my new best friend (laughs) yeah right (laughs) this was fantastic um thank you so much what do you have is there anything coming up that you wanted to share anything you're exciting about new year new things happening um we can look for i'm 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 doing uh i'm a one of the leads in a animated series called Big Nate, based on the based on the on the book series. So I play Mrs. I play Mrs. Godfrey on Big Fantastic. Nate. So that premieres, I think, on the twenty second, with sometime in January. That's going to where be, can they see that? They're on um, Paramount Plus. On Paramount Plus. Nickelodeon production, Paramount Plus. I just um, what's it called? Um, vanished, searching for my yeah. sister. Uh, that is with Tatiana Ali and Jasmine Guy, who's a hoot and a half, and boy, yeah. pair up Mary Max Tea Room in Atlanta. Who, good food. Um, uh, that's that's coming. I th- that might be the twenty second. Anyway, that's going to be on Lifetime. So check the Lifetime schedule. Um, and I'm I'm in talks to sell a sell a thing that I wrote with uh, my two writing partners about. Uh, you know, either Lifetime, Netflix, or Hallmark um, Christmas movie about a woman uh, of a certain age who finds love on a trapeze. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, and then, then, then people have said, now, do you have to star on this? I said, yeah, I do. Yes, yes that's, I do. One, that's one I want. This one's mine. <laughs> this one's mine. It's like, well, are you, are you sure she can't be 20? No, she cannot be 20. <laughs> There, there was somebody here joining us who just wanted to send his love, George Burns, in George, the house. Say good night, Gracie. George Burns. Oh, he's got a cigar and everything there. I he, love that boy. Yeah. They have the great relationship. Didn't? Yes, huh? I love George Burns, also known as God. Yes. So you had God on your side. He said you were amazing today. I hope the show met whatever expectations you had, Carolyn. Oh, Wonderful. You, you enjoyed the time with me as much as I certainly have I with you. Absolutely did. Let's do it again. Absolutely. There's more to talk about. There's so much more to talk about, right? And and you have your hands on so many different things. The main thing is you love it. I mean, yeah. what are some of those blessings and joys in your life that continue to forge you ahead, keeping you forged ahead, doing what you're doing in such a beautiful way? Um, sa- saving as many species as I possibly can. That's number one because that's that's bigger. That's 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 saving the spaceship that ours that is our planet because the rivets are popping out and I'm trying to run around and be Rosie the Riveter. That's bigger than any acting role that I will ever do. Um, hearing people laugh, that is um, that's again like oxygen to me. Um, ex- testing the limits of my own physical form on the trapeze um, and knowing that I am contributing in some small way because they say you know the more you laugh, the more years you add to your life. So yes. Um, Act, acting is 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 to educate and entertain, and if I can educate and entertain, the 
as much as many people as possible. Fantastic. I have to be behind it, but also then on a on a slightly elevated level, it's for me because acting acting. I, I had a teacher tell me this once: acting and non contact uh, sports like running, swimming are the noblest ways of experiencing yourself because you know you get to you get to turn so many facets to the light as as it were and it just kind of and get to you get to explore yourself and that's wonderful so it's 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 a blessing for me it's just a blessing for me well having you joining us was a blessing for me and all of us carolyn you really are amazing and you're a hoot you're a hoot. i am a hoot darn you <laughs> now, i have to tell you that your your intro you've got to redo your intro man how many people tell you this because the hair's longer You've got this lion mane. It's fantastic. You've got this was a it. this was a pandemic production. Well, it's yeah. always been shorter, like him. Yeah, and and there, nice. everything everything I did, you know, on television, or whatever, I was always like, gee, that you know, I can't grow it longer, can't grow it longer. So then, when you know, shoots weren't happening and planes weren't flying for a bit last year in the early part of the pandemic and all, I said, you know what? What the heck? I'm going to yeah. just, let's just do it. Let's just, and it's been a thing that the viewers, even on this series, have been following how it's just sort of, and we've. Oh, it's fantastic. It is fantastic. Thumbs up from course, Carolyn. You look, you look like one of the Knights Templar. You know, you just, you just, it looks, you look fantastic. And I too tried to grow my hair um, long and it was, it was just a, it was a tragedy. <laughs> And then you I, don't have any photos to speak of, do you? <laughs> I, 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 I do, and no one else. Uh, my father has always said, and I've mentioned it on the show, whenever anybody says something nice to you, tell them, please put it in writing and address it management. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. And then, of course, there's, what is it? I think it's Dorothy Parker who says, if you don't have anything nice to say to, about anybody, then, come sit by me. Right. <laughs> You were amazing. This was fantastic. High five. This was awesome. High five. Boom. Um, and, um, and beautiful, so lovely all, Burbank. All the wonderful, wonderful. The Lovities. The Lovities. Mm. And they already said you're a Lovity. So, I mean, there's there's Emmys, Oscars, Grammys, Tonys, Peabody's, Tellies. But then there's a Lovity on the Gym Master Show Live. How does it make you feel? I, fi I feel fantastic. I feel, I feel wrapped in a warm blanket of Lovity. You are. You are. And and there's no turning back now, Carolyn. There's none. You, and who wants you, to? You are it. <laughs> Kathleen Walker says, wonderful yeah. show. Thank you, Jim and Carolyn. So nice to meet you, Carolyn. Welcome to our lovely family. Thank and she's in New York it. City. Juanita in South Africa says, this was a great conversation. Thank you, Carolyn, for spending time with us, sharing your wonderful career and stories. Mary Bishop says, She's in Florida. Loved hearing about your career, Carolyn. Good luck in all your future endeavors. Sherry Larson in Kansas, USA. Thank you for sharing with us tonight. Keep your wonderful work. She, as an advocate. I know what <laughs> an, she means and God bless. Active advocate. <laughs> Good stuff. You're the best. Thanks for all the great time, too. I really appreciate it. And you did it, at, you did it without a glass of water. I mean, you're a pro. I know, right? Right. I so, know so. And I don't know, eat something. Who knows? Yes. Yeah. Eat something yeah. and uh, have something with ice. <laughs> Thank you. And love to everybody out there. Absolutely. Best to you, Carol. And keep up the amazing, uh, wonderful work, but also uh, don't change. You're, you're phenomenal. Okay. Okay. We'll see you again soon. Okay. You got it. Take Bye. care. Bye bye, bye. now. Carolyn Hennessy here on the show. She's an author, she's an actress, and she's an advocate. Yes. So good to see her and to learn about her extraordinary background a little bit more. Of course, you guys know her for a lot of the different shows that we've been talking about. But uh, maybe you watch her on television or see her in the movies or you've seen her on stage. And uh, now you got an opportunity to learn a little bit more about the person themselves. And that's what's great because we take you know, deep dives a little bit here. And we just have, there's no scripted questions. There's no teleprompters, none of that jazz. We just have a conversation. I even call these interviews, I call these conversations. And that's what we do, bringing all of you in. You've been commenting live throughout the Lovities. We thank you very much, uh, watching all around the world. Continue to do that on our YouTube channel. Comment on the channel. Love the channel. Give it a subscribe. The channel's Gym Masters TV. We would love that. 
And again, it was really awesome having her here on the show. She really is spectacular. And as uh, Lou Grant said to Mary Tillamore, she's got spunk. <laughs> he hated spunk, but we love it. Carolyn Hennessy, extraordinary uh, Emmy winning actress and so much more. Um, again, love these conversations. We get a chance to learn a little bit more about person themselves. And we talked about the books. I mean, great story about this with Terminator 3, right? Now, when you see that again, if you watch it again, you're going to know and appreciate what she went through to get that hair to look like that. <laughs> All these incredible roles over the years, each one unique, each one special. And uh, again, so many. Of course, that's Masterclass, which is one of her favorites and our favorites as well. Revenge. This, I know you guys commented a lot about the shot with Betty White, of, of course. And of course, like Miller General Hospital, beloved. I know a lot of the General Hospital fans were excited that she was coming on our show because I was seeing a buzz on the internet about it. And that's fantastic. She is really terrific gang. And so are you. Thanks for all these great comments. Again, we encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. Show us some lovely. Click the notification bell so you never miss any of our great episodes. And click like if you enjoyed this episode. And uh, also leave a comment for us as well. And as we always say, and again, actress, author, and advocate. That's right. There is a difference. And uh, you know, you can be an activist in terms of them believing in something, but definitely you're advocating for something. And that's what she does. It's what Betty White did as well. We say, don't forget to smile, gang. And uh, of course, don't forget to share the uh, Lovity, the JMS Lovity. And also find your Zen place. There's the ocean. You guys know I love that. And my work in television, radio, stage, and film over the years, the same thing as well. Help us grow. Share the lovity. Tell everybody you know about the Gym Master Show Live. Share the links on your social media. And, of course, spread the word about our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. Thanks for being here, gang, for those watching live and those of you who have been watching uh, in the archives later on. Kathleen Walker says, thank you, Jim. You are very, very welcome. A pleasure to have you here as well. And a uh, wonderful show tonight. Good night, all. And uh, really good stuff. Since we're live, you know, that's why they say good night or good morning or good day. Yes, advocate. The phone types what it wants. <laughs> that happens. That absolutely happens. You guys are fantastic. Thanks for being with us in this episode. We'll see you on the next one. We're back actually tomorrow night as well with another fabulous guest. And check us, uh, you know, check your local listings on our YouTube channel for all the episodes. Don't forget, you can find me here on uh, not only YouTube, but also Facebook and Instagram and Twitter at Gym Masters TV. But our series, The Gym Master Show Live, is right here on our YouTube channel. And we love it. Love doing it for all of you. And thanks for all the great comments. One more time, we thank Carolyn for joining us here on the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. We thank all of you. Be well, be good to one another, take care, and we'll see you next time right here on the Gym Master Show Live. We love you all. Take care. <music>